Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition, it's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, brought to us by Bandai. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the SNES was released in November of 1994, well into the run of the Power Rangers. Here we go with Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the SNES. As we begin the game, I'm going to go down to the options menu. There's not really a whole lot you can change, just really stereo and mono, as well as put in a password. As we begin the game, we'll get a little bit of a cutscene before taking control of the selection screen to pick our first ranger. You have all five of the original rangers to pick from. I'm going to play as all five of them during the course of this run, starting with Zack the Black Ranger on the far right as we enter into area number one. Money Morphin Power Rangers is a pretty basic beat-em-up game overall. You fight a ton, and I mean an absolute ton, of putty soldiers all throughout the course of the game. There's a few different types of putty, some have more health than others, but you'll be fighting pretty much the same ones throughout most of this game. Unfortunately, your moves, such as like your throw, for example, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Your real damaging thing is just your straight-up normal combo with your regular attack. While there's plenty of enemies that are going to be the one-hit ones, that no matter what you do to them, they're defeated instantly, the other type where you actually have to do some damage to them, you want to make sure that they land first before you start attacking them. If they jump in from the side screen or jump from above, you'll just end up knocking them back to the ground and it doesn't end up doing very much damage and you'll just have to keep hitting them to the ground over and over again. However, just doing a little quick combo is enough to usually take out most of these guys. Unfortunately, you don't have anything special really you can use, especially as the human forms, but once you use your Morpher and change into the Power Ranger in each level, you do at least have your weapon to use, though it's very basic. After the cutscene with Bones and transforming into the Black Power Ranger, we'll continue on now. As you can see, we have the Axe, which is extremely useful for destroying these enemies. Just one combo is enough to take them down. And with the weapons, you have a longer reach, so it's even easier to take out these various putties. Be careful of the bombs that get dropped from the flying robots above. Very easy to get past them. You do have a special move that you can pull off. That's the bomb flashing in the lower right corner. I'm going to save that, though, usually for the boss encounter, just to help me out during that fight to make it a little easier, though most of the bosses are still pretty easy to deal with. Always fun to be able to pick up a giant park bench and just launch it at an enemy. Eventually we'll come to a parking lot area where we'll have more putties to deal with, but you get a vehicle that gets to drive onto the screen carrying several of them. You can attack the car if you want to, just for extra fun. And these barrels are extremely useful for taking out multiple putties with a single throw.
Here we go with the first boss encounter against Bones. Bones was in the second episode of the show, and the first of, like, Rita's creatures other than the putties that you got to see. We're mostly going to hit him with quick combos on the ground. Use your special move if you still have it to do at least a little bit of damage to him. Every time he jumps kind of like over our heads, we'll turn around and just immediately go right back into the combo, trying to knock him back throughout the room. Eventually, he'll break apart. Once he does that, the second part of the battle begins as he reforms, and we're going to continue the same thing. He's a little bit quicker this time around, jumping all around, but your jump kick combined with just doing the axe combos is pretty much enough to take him down, watching out for the flying projectiles that he once in a while will shoot out. The third and final part of this battle, he has a floating head that goes around. You can jump up into the air to do a jump kick to it. Or if you jump in place, not pressing any direction, you use your weapon, which can be very effective for hitting enemies in the air. Once Bones is done, we're going on to level number two. For level 2, we're going to pick Kimberly to start off as we begin in this park area. There's a few things overhead that we can take out with some jump kicks. Pretty much though, you know what to expect already throughout the course of this level. More putty soldiers. Interestingly enough, Tommy, the Green Ranger, doesn't make any appearance, unfortunately, in this title, as it seems to be more focused on earlier episodes of the show, even though the show was into its second season by the time this game finally did end up rolling out. In fact, the White Ranger was already introduced by the time this game came out. Growing up, while I liked the Power Rangers, I wasn't quite as into it as I was into stuff like TMNT before that. However, I did like the toys for the Power Rangers probably the most. I had a Megazord and eventually got the Dragon Zord, which I was very excited to get. Unfortunately, I never got the White Tiger Zord. What was your favorite Zord, whether it was one of the ones from this show or one of the other incarnations? Be careful of some rolling barrels that will come on the screen. You can easily avoid them if you want. Sometimes they'll end up running into you while you're dealing with a putty. I'd rather focus on the putty than the little bit of damage I'll end up taking from that barrel. It's always annoying when you're in the middle of a combo and the enemy decides to jump just because you end up knocking them down with that weak damage instead of being able to finish off the combo. Here we have the little cutscene and we get to morph into the Pink Ranger. Now the Pink Ranger uses a bow, but you don't actually get to use it as a weapon, instead you use it as like a bat, just swinging it wildly. Unfortunately, the game isn't the absolute greatest. It has uh, some issues, like for example, they kind of just rushed some aspects, like the Ranger's sprites are all the same, each one just another recolor. And they could have put more effort into the weapons to make them a little bit more interesting to use, especially Kimberly's. In the next segment, we have to start heading upwards. Holding up when you jump here, you can land on these platforms and swing yourself up. Be very careful of the enemies on the platforms as you do so. Right after that, you have a wonderful conveyor belt while dealing with, well, you guessed it, more putties. Watch out for the flaming junk that falls from the ceiling. Usually falling in front of us, not too bad. Only like right here when you're dealing with some putties will you potentially get hit. But they always fall in the same spot, so if you stay in the middle or to the far left or right, you'll be safe.
In the next segment, just start heading on down, working your way between the platforms. At the bottom, you have a couple of shield puppies to deal with. Just mash the attack button to break their shields and then finish them off. In the next hallway, you can destroy these and uh, you'll find some health that you can pick up. Right after that, deal with the putties and then flip your way up to this platform. Jumping over to the next one on the right and working your way over now to the left. Wait a moment for this to pass you by so that you can make it up safely. And then up to the next platform. You can do a wall jump that's actually pretty cool, so use that to bounce your way up to the top and reach that upper platform. Here on this platform, as you can see, there's little fires coming out of it. Be very careful of those while dealing with a series of blue putties. Work your way up the moving platforms. There's a few enemies in the air that you may have to deal with. The platforming, thankfully, isn't too bad in this game. Usually I don't have too much problem getting through these areas. Here you have putties with giant mace balls. Be very careful of them. And just kind of attack them from afar, especially with your weapon. more health for us to pick up before heading off screen to the next area. Here we have our boss encounter against Gnarly Gnome. Gnarly Gnome appeared in episode 5 of season number 1, and we're going to start off this battle by using our special move. I like Kimberly's one, just kind of looks cool. And then we're going to get up close and start doing our combo to him. When you hit him, a lot of times he'll get knocked away or just immediately disappear. Just be prepared to chase him down. He will only reappear on platforms that are on screen. So if you stay right around here, you can get him stuck between just these three platforms. Where all you need to do is turn around at most in order to hit him. Now when he goes to the very bottom platform, he potentially will hit you. But for the most part, this ends up being relatively easy. Once we deliver the final hit, we're moving on to level number three. For level 3, we're going to pick Jason and go into the sewer area. Be careful of the spider-like enemy. You can do a jump kick in order to take care of him as you're making your way through. In the water itself, there's these like electrical rocks, so you want to be cautious of those. Doing a ducking kick is actually very effective against enemies just as effective as using your regular standing combo, so it's something you can use at your disposal as well. And in fact, it's a little bit faster, I think. Pick up the health if you need it. By now, you're probably an expert at taking down these putties.
as a kid, my friends and I pretty much had all the Power Rangers games that ended up coming out. And we ended up playing the fighting games more often than not because we could fight each other instead of like this, for example, which is unfortunately only a single player experience, though it's a game that screams out to be a multiplayer beat em up. Right after this group of enemies, we have our little cutscene and we transform into the Red Ranger. As the Red Ranger, we have our sword, which has a nice range, just like all the weapons do, so we easily can take out putties from a good distance away without having to get too close and potentially end up getting hit. Completing that group of putties, we're moving on to the next area. After dealing with the putties, duck and crawl underneath of here. The enemy will be chasing you, just move quickly and you should have no problem outrunning them. You'll then do the same thing on the next section, just keep moving quickly so you can outrun the evil yellow putty. As well as try to be careful of the gas that's spewing out here. In this segment, we have to drop on down after the bridge is destroyed. You'll be in some water, so quickly swim over to the left or right side to avoid the putties hitting you. And then when the water drains, get close and start dealing your attack. Unfortunately, you cannot attack while you're swimming. You can only attack while the water is down, so when it is down, use that to your advantage to take out the enemies as quickly as possible. This is one of the few little annoying areas, I'd say, in the game. Over here, use your wall climb in order to get up, similar to the one from Batman on the NES, which I've always loved doing. Climb up here, being careful of the gas spewing out. Sometimes timing it exactly right can be a little bit difficult, but thankfully you won't get hurt too bad if you do get hit. We reach the next area where we're going to jump down into some more water and swim on through. Head over to the right, watching out for the rotating blades, as well as any enemy that may get you. That one putty that likes to follow you along the bottom here. Have to wait for the water to rise so that we can reach this platform above. Unfortunately right here I get stuck. I can't swim any farther right because of the way the, the sprite is and the water is, but thankfully it doesn't take too long to go back down. Swim on through here, watching out for the blades on both the top and bottom of the section. Head on up, getting between a couple of more blades, eventually the water will retreat a little bit. If it does, you get to run for a moment. Continue along the top here, once the water finally retreats once more, we can move on to the next section. This boss is Eye Guy, who appeared in episode number 8 of season 1. He shoots out giant lasers that we're going to jump over and get close to him and attack him with our weapon. Just keep doing quick combos in order to do a pretty good amount of damage while ducking or dodging out of the way of his giant laser. I prefer ducking because that way you can tell when he's going to duck and shoot his laser. The upper lasers you'll automatically be able to dodge by ducking. You'll also, if close and ducking, miss out on most of the flying little eyeballs that he shoots out. At any point, use your special move to help you out. After the first form is finished off, you'll have to take on the second form, just this flying eye. 
Use your standing jump in order to take him out. Don't move left or right. Just jump up into the air straight up and attack. That way you have a longer range and a higher range with your attack than doing the jumping kick. Once you deliver the final hit to Eye Guy, though, we're moving on to level number four. For level number four, we're going to pick Billy. As they always portray Billy as scared and the weakling, he has a uh, very interesting attack pattern, which is pretty funny overall. It's still as effective as any of the other Rangers combos, but you just got to love that arm attack as he just swings wildly while not even looking and still able to take out the putties. Be careful of the enemy overhead blasting on down as you're dealing with this series of putties. Once they're taken care of, head over to the right and break open the door to head through. The chandeliers above you will fall down as you run, but you can thankfully easily run underneath of them. Trick the second one into falling so you don't have to deal with it during this next segment, and then just do what you did before, dealing with the laser firing robot above and battling the various putties on the bottom. couple more chandeliers as we reach another one of those doors. Take out all the putties so that you can then break down that door and continue on. Another thing funny about the game is some other characters like Zordon and Alpha, they don't make any sort of appearance since there's no storyline given to you, it's just kind of an amalgamation of random episodes. But even like the themes of the levels, backgrounds and the like aren't really anything particularly from any episode. While I have a lot of like nostalgia for this game, it's not the best beat em up by any means. It's mostly just because it needed more variety overhaul. There's just these same kind of fights with these putties just endlessly throughout. Granted, the Game Boy game, for example, isn't much better, but it's more limited on that system, so you kind of are expect it. Here we have a little cutscene and transform Morph into the Blue Ranger. The boss for this level is Genie, who appeared in the 13th episode of Season 1, Switching Places, which involves Billy and Kimberly switching bodies for the day, so fitting to play as Billy during the course of this level. So I guess if it's based off the episode directly, we're maybe playing as Kimberly during the course of this level instead of Billy the Blue Ranger? Either way, making it to the next segment, we're going to get on this elevator. What would a beat em up game be without an elevator segment? While riding up, watch out for the electricity as well as like the gears that fall down crashing. There will be robots that appear on the left and right walls that come down and then fire a laser out at you. Mostly just have to keep moving back and forth watching out for the electricity. The robots on the walls fire at you when they get onto your line of sight so you can kind of jump and trick them and then duck underneath the fire if needed but usually they aren't too bad. Eventually, the elevator will come to a stop and we'll jump up and hang onto this platform before climbing on up and working our way up the next sets of platforms. You'll have to do some wall jumps to be very careful of the enemies moving back and forth on the platforms. I do like these areas where you get to scroll up vertically, they're pretty fun to do.
A few of these putties that shimmy across, you can actually knock off down into the pit. You can also knock enemies back into it, but usually your combo is already going to be knocking them back. Billy's weapon is one of my favorites to use. That spin ends up being very efficient to make sure that you end up hitting all the enemies you're trying to attack. Watch out for the falling debris during this segment. Always fun. Shimmy on across. You can go right over this turret. You can drop down if you want and take it out before then dealing with some more putties. Take out these couple of turrets as you're going across real quick and then jump over this small gap using the platform. Here you'll have a robot kind of come down and start moving around. Jump up with your standard attacks or stand on the ground and attack if need be. He has a three shot spread shot that it does that you can jump over or you can avoid by getting out of the way of like in between or to the left and far right of it as it goes down below the platform you're on. Once it rises back up, finish it off and continue on. Thankfully when you get hit by an enemy you don't get knocked back very much. It's now time to battle the next boss. Here's the genie. For this fight, we're going to get up close and immediately go into our combo, knocking him away after we complete it. You mostly have to avoid his mirrors that shoot down this electricity. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to dodge. As soon as they stop, you'll have a second to move out of the way of them. And if you keep moving back and forth, just attacking the genie, you can usually do a lot of damage to him quickly before he's able to even do some of his moves. Once you've weakened him a little bit, one of your bombs, if you have that available, will finish him off. Onwards to area number 5, the final one where we get to play as one of the rangers. The last two levels are Megazord battles. For this one we're playing as the yellow ranger, Trini. Trini's combo is pretty efficient, at least it's better than Billy's that's for sure. You also have the uh, ducking kicks that you can use at any time. Sometimes I like to combo with some punches and then some low kicks. You gotta try to make it at least a little bit more fun. If you have a few enemies with weapons, watch out for the ones that will swing at you as well as the ones that are firing. Thankfully, if you're close, you don't have to worry too much about the firing projectiles. Just past this hill is a crate you can open up for some food before getting into the next battle against some putties. These jumping ones are always a little bit annoying. Thankfully not too much farther before we get to transform into the Yellow Ranger. The Yellow Ranger's size are pretty useful as a weapon. Not quite as good as Billy's Trident, but very effective still nonetheless, just like the rest of them. During this segment you have barrels that roll down as well as some putties. Just duck down and hit the barrels in order to get rid of them.
Thankfully, if they do hit you, though, they don't do too much damage. This is a pretty lengthy little area that we gotta run through lots and lots of putties. Being the final of these kind of levels, not that surprising that they're gonna throw as much at you as they can. You can use these barrels to help you out and take out a putty. Watch out for the laser spewing robot above as you're dealing with these putties. Thankfully, you can stand in between the shots. Here we have another one overhead going back and forth. Once again, just watch out for it and take out the putties. While heading up here, barrels will roll down. If you're not careful, they may end up running right into you. Eventually, we'll come to the end of the segment, moving on to the next area here. More of what we've been dealing with. Watch out once again for that laser spewing robot above as you deal with a lot of putties coming your way. Thankfully, the firing can also help you a little bit. At the end of this area, take out the robot on the wall before then dealing with these putties and destroying the door and heading through. After a healthy gauntlet of enemies, we reach another little elevator. Thankfully this one we don't have to deal with dodging or anything, it just takes us right up to where we need to go. From here, head across over to the right, every so often going down and ducking if need be, so you can watch out for the giant fire blast that's about to come through. You can use the upper platforms above, or the ones below, whichever ones you prefer to try to avoid getting hit. Thankfully though, it's not like an instant death or anything. It can also defeat the enemies that are going to try to attack you during this segment. At the end of the area, take out the giant fire spewing laser thing. It'll take several hits and you can duck during this so you won't get hurt while you're attacking it. Take out a couple of putties, watching out for the gun turret above you firing down. Then destroy the door and head through, doing pretty much what you just did again in the next room. The next boss is the Dark Warrior, showing up in episode number 15 of season 1. He likes to teleport around. When he reappears, you can hit him with a nice combo. Use your bomb, of course, if you have that available to you. If you get him in a nice combo, as soon as he comes out of moving, a lot of times he'll just immediately disappear again or do a jump, and in which case you can once again get him in a nice little combo. His main attack when he'll twirl around his blade before throwing it, you have a lot of opportunity to get in there real quick and hit him before he actually ends up attacking. While he is one of the tougher fights in the game, as long as you're diligent and stay close, he shouldn't be able to drain your health much. Once the Dark Warrior is defeated, we're moving on to the next level.
Area 6 is the first of the two Megazord fights that we get to do. Here we have Mutatus from the two-part episode, Season 1, Episodes 28 and 29. This is actually the second form that this monster used. This fight is similar to the one we did on the NES controlling the Megazord. You even have the special moves and the power meter that will fill up at the bottom, and when it fills up, it changes which of your special moves you're going to do. A lot of times you want to wait till it fills up all the way to the top so you can do your best move. Thankfully, if you use it beforehand, the other special moves at least will help you out for sure as you slowly drain the monster's health. I like to stay at a distance a lot of times so that if he does start to attack, usually my blade has enough reach where I'll hit him and stop his attack before he's able to reach me. Here we now have the final area of the game, area number 7. Here we battle Cyclopsis, who has two health bars. Cyclopsis was in episodes number 39 and 40 of season 1, Doomsday, and was controlled by Goldar, who you don't get to see in this game, but at least we know that Goldar is controlling Cyclopsis, so technically we're battling Goldar and Cyclopsis. The first fight, pretty easy. The projectile he fires out, you can easily jump over. Just like with the other creature, try to keep him at a little bit of a distance and then attack as he's attacking and you can usually stop his own. Use your special moves when you have it filled up, especially if you get it all the way up to full to do some devastating damage. The fight isn't over though as we begin part 2 of the battle. This fight is a little bit harder than the first one, but we're still pretty much going to be doing that same strategy, getting him in to kind of the corner, attacking him right before he attacks or as he attacks fill up our meter, and deliver those attacks when possible. A lot of times jumping in with your attack, if he does a blast, you'll get away from it, and be able to then go right into a nice little combo. Just do your best to keep dodging out of the way of his projectiles by jumping over them when you can, and if you have that special move, unleash it, and once you finish him off, you can sit back and enjoy the ending the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the SNES. So there you have it, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the SNES. Not the best beat-em-up game ever, but one that I do have nostalgia for, and I'm sure a lot of you out there have some nostalgia for this title as well.
at the end we see the presented by Bandai screen and then it'll go to another little screen where we get to see that Rita is still lurking. The game also gives you some passwords. These are the passwords for the final three areas. The two final Megazord battles and then the final password is for the second form of that final fight if you want to just go straight to that. We then see the fin, and presented by Bandai this time, and that will wrap up this episode of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.